All right guys, Jay here. In today's tutorial, we will be expanding our walking controller so that our player character can move up and down, left and right, in four directions, and in eight directions without smooth rotation. Are you ready? Let's do it. For those of you who are new to the tutorial, this is the third video from my Unity New Input System tutorial series. It's a build up from my previous videos where I talked about how you can make a basic walking controller and then extending it to add rotation to your player character to look in the direction it's moving. So if you have not watched that, you should definitely watch it as I will not be explaining the codes that I've already explained in my previous videos. Let's open up our walking controller script in Visual Studio. The first thing we are going to do is we are going to copy and paste a public enumerator that allows us to change our possible rotation modes based on any restricted movement through the inspector. Let's drop it below our variables. So under the enum movements, we have three. That's basically the current default 360 rotation with unrestricted movement. Then we have our strict two direction horizontal where the player can only move left or right. Then our strict 2D directions vertical is where the player can only move up or down. Our strict 4D directions is a combination of our strict 2D directions horizontal and strict 2D directions vertical. For our strict 8 directions, it's basically the same as free but without its free 360 degrees rotation. So its rotation will just snap towards north, northeast, east, south, southeast. Well, you get the idea, it will just snap towards where it's facing without smoothly rotating towards it. And then we'll create a public movements movement to be movements.free. So the default movement will always be movements free. Now let's copy and paste a chunk of code that will actually handle the rotation based on its movement. So for our default rotation, which we already had it previously, has been added over here which will take effect when the movement is set to movements.free so we can just remove this without any issues and then if our movement is movement strict two direction horizontal which means that our movement can only be left or right then in our switch statement we'll check where our character player is supposed to face so when it's facing east will change its local rotation to face the east. If its facing direction is west, will change its local rotation to face the west. We are changing its y vector value. Same thing under strict two directions vertical. If it's facing the north, will change its local rotation to face the north, which is basically zero. And when it's facing the south, will change its local rotation to face the south. Else, if movement is equal to movements.strict four directions, it's basically the combination of what we already have in our strict two directions vertical and strict two directions horizontal. And lastly, for this, this is our strict eight directions. It's basically the same as our rotation during our movements.free without it smoothly rotating. So basically, we will just lose the cotonian.slurp but we'll just have this. Cotanian.loop rotation and we'll pass in the character's walk velocity. So now that we already have this chunk of code that handles the looking direction, whether it should look freely, like rotate freely to look towards the direction it's moving to, or snap, we will now add the chunk of code that actually handles the movement, the velocity of the rigid body. So we'll make a switch for our movement. If our case is movement.free, that's basically the default. So we can just remove this. And then if our movements is strict two directions horizontal, that means we can only move left or right, despite the fact if the user presses the up and down keys. So we will then create a new vector tree, passing the velocity.x, but for the z, we we'll always set it to zero. So no matter if the user presses the up and down key, it will have no effect. That will be the same for our strict two-direction vertical. We'll have zero as its x-axis 
and then we'll pass in the walk velocity.z. Under our straightforward directions, if the walk velocity.x is equal to 0 or the walk velocity.z is equal to 0, that means it's either moving left or right, up or down, then we'll pass in this, a new vector tree with its walk velocity.x and walk velocity.z. So under this, if the player character is moving up or down, meaning to say the horizontal axis is 0, so if the current walk velocity.x has changed, meaning to say the previous walk velocity is now 0 and the current walk velocity has changed to 1, we'll then add a new vector tree and set the z axis to 0 so that it stops moving up or down. Same thing under here, if it's already moving left or right and its current walk velocity.z is now 1, that means the player has pressed the up and down key, then we'll pass in a new vector tree with the x value set to 0. So under the strict 8 directions, we'll just key in the same as what we have in our movements.3. That's because the snapping is actually handled by the facing direction code that we just pasted earlier. With this done, let's save our script, head back into Unity, and now if we select our player, toggle this. Under our walking controller script, we now have a movement option which we can set to any of our desired option. So let's play our game and test this in one time. So when our movement is set to free, we can basically do what we already used to do. Now if we change it to strict 2 direction horizontal, remember to select your game screen. It can only move left or right. Pressing up or down won't do anything. If we change it to strict 2 direction verticals, it can move up or down. Pressing left or right won't do anything. Now if we change to strict 4 directions, we can move left, right, up or down. If you press W and D at the same time, it won't move diagonally. So now if we select strict 8 directions, you can move left, right, up, down, and it can also move diagonally, but without smooth rotation, like what we have if we have selected free. So there you go. With just a single script, you can now control your player in any way you want. In my next tutorial, we will be extending this script so that it can be used using on-screen controllers for mobile platforms. Alright, thank you for watching my tutorial. I hope you like it. Please consider subscribing and you see the bell icon over there? Hit it. Hit it. Alright, I'll see you again next time. <clears throat>